Okay, we're going to set up OSPF on this network, and this is actually going to be way easier than static routing. It's not going to be near as efficient, but instead of having to worry about the direction and routing traffic, it's really easy for EIGRP, OSPF, RIP, all of those dynamic protocols. All you really have to worry about is teaching the router what to advertise. And you only have to teach it to advertise the direct adjacency, and you don't even have to be redundant about it. In other words, both the Galactica and the Pegasus know about Network 32. Only the Galactica knows about 16. Well, it's got to advertise 16, but if it also advertises 32, then you don't have to be redundant. Then all the Pegasus has to advertise is 49 and 64, and so forth. Um, so there, it's it's much less configuration than than static routing would be. So and to take a look at that, let's go ahead and set it up. So we'll log on to the Galactica and let me go to privilege mode and configuration mode. And the command is router to set up a dynamic routing protocol. And the first one, we'll stick to a generic one. What if you're on a mixed network and you don't have all Cisco equipment? Well, EIGRP is a lot better, having an administrative distance of 90 instead of 110 like OSPF. But OSPF might be your best choice if you have mixed routers and they're not all Cisco. Because you know the Cisco protocols, they're the best, but they're, they're proprietary. They only work with the Cisco equipment. So. Um, we could do this and RSPF and then, oh, excuse me, OSPF. And then what we want to do is um, basically give it a process ID, a PID. And the PID doesn't really matter. Um, the area does matter, but you know, you could, I'll just start it off at one, router OSPF one. Um, but what I want to do, notice how the prompt changes. And now I want to tell it what to advertise. It's just going to be network. And it's going to be um, 192, 168, and 10 and 16. That's the network that I want to advertise. Um, and the subnet mask 255, 255, 255, 240. And I want to supply an area in this case. Area, and I'm just going to put it all in area zero. And just remember that whatever you advertise has to be in the same area, okay? Needs to be in the same area. Um, but that's, that's the only real adjacency, I guess, that you know, because it's going to learn about all the other networks from all the other routers. Um, but if I wanted to, I could also tell it to advertise 32, and it would be able to send that information out and, and update the other routers. Um, or I could teach this, you know, I mean, I have multiple choices here. I could tell both of them to advertise 32, but that's kind of almost need, needless redundancy there. Um, they already know about it. But I'll go ahead and, you know, we'll go ahead and have the 32 network here. Again, in area zero. So it'll advertise both of those. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and exit. Exit and copy run start. And if I do a show IP route, because there's no other routers right now that are running OSPF. So it's not, you know, all you're going to see is those adjacencies. But once we get other routers running OSPF, when they reach convergence, when they've all communicated their topology and with OSPF they sent link state advertisements or LSA packets and hello packets back and forth to build their adjacencies in the same area then we'll start to see a lot of things added to the routing table prefixed with an O and meaning that they were learned via OSPF um, so let's go ahead and set up the other routers to advertise here configuration mode and doesn't matter the pro I could say 13, 7, 9, 4, whatever. I'm just going to use one. Just to pit the process ID. Because you can have multiple instances of OSPF running on any router. And that references that singular instance. That's not important. The PID's not important, but the area is important. All my routers need to be in the exact same area. Now I need to tell it what network to advertise. Well, what are the adjacencies? What are the networks it knows about? In this case, it knows about 48, which is this network here. And there's about 64, which is this network here. So, 192, 168, uh, 10, 48, 255, 255, 255, 240. And make sure I put it in the same area, area zero. And I can also teach it about, or teach it to advertise 64. Okay. So, so far, this router is advertising 16 and 32. This router is advertising 48 and 64. Okay, and let me just save it. Okay, so now I have two routers set up. Now let's get on the third router. 
Well, this router is already advertising 64, so what does the Valkyrie need to advertise? What networks does it know about? It knows about 96, and it knows about 80. And those are the two we'll advertise there, but remember we've got to put them all in the same area. Privilege mode and global configuration mode. Good grief, that was slow. And <laughs> means the router command, OSPF, a process ID or PID, it doesn't really matter what number you use there. Just the area is what matters. I know I sound like a broken record, but maybe if I say it enough times, it'll be easy to remember. 192.168. Um, and there's our network address. And then the, the next two networks to advertise again are 80 and 96. So I'm going to say 80. Our subnet mask, 4 bits for subnets, 4 bits for hosts. And our area number, in this case, area 0. And same thing for 96. I just hit the up arrow and enter that. Control Z down to privilege mode. I'm going to do a copy run start. And so now let's see what's going on. Galacticus advertising network 16 and 32. Pegasus is advertising uh, network 48 and 64. And the Valkyrie is advertising network 80 and 96. All right. So all of those, all these networks are being advertised at least by some router, and they're kind of load balancing. So hopefully no routers advertising too much at once. And then they're all sending hello packets out and building adjacencies. And they're all sending link state advertisements and LSA packets and topology tables and building up a database there. So let's hop on over to the data list now. And, and what does it need to advertise? Well, since the Valkyrie is advertising 96, we don't have to burden the data list redundantly with advertising that network. But it needs to know about what, or it needs to advertise what, in this case, the 112 network and the 128 network. So again, we want to put it in the same area and set up OSPF. Global configuration mode. And let's do the router command, return, no, router and OSPF and a PID or process ID. I use one, doesn't really matter. Can be the same, can be different. What does matter again is the area. And I'm going to do use the network command to advertise 192.168.10, which is the network part of the address. And I want to do 112 and my normal subnet mask with 240 in the end there and make sure I put it into area zero and I also want to do 128 in addition to 112 and again the same area okay control is in under privilege mode copy run start copy run tart no copy run start and I'm done there okay so now Daedalus is advertising 112 and 128. We just have two more routers to configure, Artemis and Persephone. I'm going to hop onto Artemis, and I'm going to enable. And I'm going to go here and go to global configuration mode, and router OSPF and a PID of, uh, again, it's just easy to use one. And I'll advertise my next two networks on the Artemis. And so Artemis, what networks does it know about that? haven't been advertised yet. Well, if Daedalus is advertising 112 and 128, Artemis doesn't need to redundantly advertise 128. So what does it need to advertise? Well, let's see, how about the 144 network, and then over here the 160 network. Okay, so 144 and 160 are what it needs to advertise, which would be 192, 168, 10, and 144. And class C, 24-bit CIDR subnet with four bits uh, for subnetting four bits for host and the last byte or octet, so that's 240. And again, area zero. And then finally, after 144, the only other network we want to advertise is what? 160. And we want to put it in the same area there. I'm going to control Z down to privilege mode and go ahead and save my running configuration to the startup configuration, and we're done. And now we're down to our last router. And notice this has taken us a lot less time than it you know took us for static configuration, albeit you could say that our you know because we're using a dynamic routing protocol, our network's full of a lot more traffic. It's a lot less efficient than it was under static. Um, so think of these as different tools. You know, you might for a small, tight, efficient network, you might statically route it for a larger changing network, you may decide that a dynamic routing protocol is, is the only way to go to be able to manage the network size and, and complexity. 
Um, but in global configuration mode, again, I want to use the router command and OSPF is our protocol of, of choice, open shortest path first, a PID or process ID, and let me tell it what network to advertise in 192.168.10. And let's see what we're advertising and what we need to advertise. Artemis is advertising 144. Artemis is also advertising 160. So the only thing that's not being advertised is what? In this case, um, 176, this whole network over here. And that's all that the Persephone has to advertise. So 192, 168, 10, and 176. And class C subnet 24 bit and 4 bits in the last octet for the subnet, 4 bits for the hosts, and area 0. Okay. So we put all of these in the same area. We've told them all what to advertise. I'm going to go into a copy run start. And all we have to do is test this thing out. Now when using a dynamic routing protocol like uh, OSPF or even EIGRP, you have to allow time for convergence. About a minute and a half, maybe two or even more minutes on a larger network. And what that is, is all these routers have to communicate. They have to learn about all the other networks from their neighbors. And they're sending several kinds of packets. They're sending out uh, you know, LSA packets or link state advertisements. They're sending out hello packets to build adjacencies. And they're communicating back and forth with each other, building a topology database, a neighborship database. And when they do, they'll finally calculate and figure out the shortest, you know, what they consider the most efficient path to route packets, datagrams, traffic from one subnet or network to the next. And when that finally happens and all the routers have learned about all the other uh, networks that the other routers know about, then we say convergence has taken place. Until then, you know, we, we don't, you know, we're not really going to have complete routing. In other words, our, you know, our echo replies, our traffic's not going to be able to make it all the way through the network. So after we've waited a few minutes for convergence to take place, let's, let's test it out and look at some traffic and see if anything that, you know, any routes maybe that our routers have learned about through OSPF. So the first thing we'll do is look at the routing table. I'm just going to do show IP route. And notice all of these entries here prefixed with an O were learned via OSPF. And because all the routers are in the same area, they have a topology table and a neighborship table, and a neighborship database. And um, so now it's learned, you know, it's from all the other routers' advertisements, and then they too have all learned. If we were to look at their routing tables, they'd have, you know, similar entries from other routers showing them how to route their traffic. And um, there's a couple of commands that you can look at to actually, you know, to actually be able to see. Uh, OSPF traffic. So um, let's do debug. Let's see IP and let's do OSPF here um, using the help system to debug IP OSPF and events. All right, and then we'll have to wait a little bit, but we should be able to if we wait long enough. I believe it's like 90 seconds. There you go. We get some hello packets. Link set advertisements and hello packets. And this is just showing us some of the traffic that's being sent back and forth between the routers um, as they're communicating and sharing their adjacencies and their advertisements and the networks that they know about. So unlike when we did the static routing example, we didn't have to configure all that. OSPS handling that for us. All we had to tell the routers to do is what to advertise. The network's directly adjacent to them. And I'm just going to do... Um, <clears throat> Let me do, let me undebug all there. Okay, so let's test it out now. Let's let's see if we actually have convergence. And I'm going to hop on the Gaius again. And let's just try to get some traffic through. So let's try from network 16 to network 32 this time. 192.168.10 and let's go to a 34. Okay, so network 32 is good there, IP address 34. Let's try some of our other networks. So we'll do 50, we'll do the Sagan, we'll do 28, the Cameron, excuse me, 28, that was, sorry, yeah, 82, so 64. So let's do, let's do 52, the Sagan, 
Oop. And we do not yet have convergence there. So let's try reaching the gateway 192.168.10.49. 192.168.10.49. All right, we got the gateway. So now let's try 50, which would be the Sagan. All right, and now we have convergence. Now we can reach the Sagan. Before we couldn't. And again, with static routing, it'd be instant. There'd be no big deal. But here we're, you know, because these routes occasionally time out and then they, then they're updated and link state and hello and all this, you know, it's constantly changing and constantly filling the network with traffic so unless you absolutely need to implement dynamic routing it's not always the most efficient way to go but again for a really large complex network I guess static routing is kind of impractical or it's just too cumbersome to try to set your routing tables up like that um, but we're so far we're so good right from network 16 to 32 over to 48 now let's try the 64 network so 65 and 66 respectively See if we can hop on over there. Okay, OSPF has learned to route between those. Oop, don't want that number, that's a bad number. Let's do 66, got our kicks on route 66. All right, so we've got 16 and 32 and 48 and 64, it looks good. Now what about 80 and 96? Let's try those. So let's see, we got a gateway there, 81, 82, 83. Okay, so so far OSPF has learned the routes all the way from 16 going all the way to um, yeah, our 80 network there. So let's try 96. What were IPs there? It was 97 and 98. Well, we could actually ping. Can't ping the network address, so 97. No problem. Adjacency on the router. What about the 98? On the next network. Okay, we're routing there. Now we get all the way down to the data list. Let's try network 112. So we'll hit the gateway, which is 113. And then let's hit the Kirk and the Spock, 114 and 115. So we hit the Kirk and the Spock from the Gaius. So we're routing from here all the way down here via OSPF. Looks good. Let's try the next network, 128, which will be 129 and 130. Looks good. And 130. Looks good. All right, on the Artemis. And then what are our next two networks? Well, that'll be the 144 and the 160. So let's try 145, the Gateway, and then Einstein and Oppenheimer. All right, got the Gateway. Got Einstein. And we got Oppenheimer. Atomic bomb, Manhattan Project, ah! <clears throat> and now let's see what else have we got. Um, that's testing it all the way to, let's, let's go ahead and do the 160 network. We'll do 161, the connection between our two routers and 162, between the Artemis and the Persephone, 162. And then finally, let's hit the gateway on the other side of the Persephone. So 177 on the 176 subnet. Looks good. And finally, can we hit the Da Vinci and the Michio Kaku? So let's try that. 178. And we have Da Vinci. And let's see if Michio is playing nice today. 179. And Michio Kaku says, reply, 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 reply. <clears throat> so in this case, using OSPF and convergence, we we're able to dynamically route across 11 subnets. Um, you know, here from the 16 subnet all the way to the 176 subnet. Just an example of how to configure it and how to set up OSPF or any other dynamic routing protocol for that matter. It pretty much works on the same principle, although the syntax might be a little bit different and, of course, the, the structure.